Hi guys, this is Wesley from Paradigm Cooling and in this video I'm going to explain the basic functions of the refrigeration vapor compression cycle. We will upload a detailed video explaining the more advanced principles of these systems at the later stage. But for now, we will only discuss the very basics. Now it is important to mention that while I'm explaining this in the context of a refrigeration system, this is the same mechanical system that applies to air conditioning. Also, if you like our content, please subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos just like this one. The vapor compression cycle consists of four main components, namely the compressor, the condenser, a metering device, and the evaporator. These components work together to remove heat from one area and then reject it to another using a fluid known as a refrigerant. The compressor pumps high pressure, high temperature refrigerant vapor into the condenser, where it is expelled to the surrounding air, thereby changing the refrigerant from a vapor to liquid state. That change of state is caused by the refrigerant temperature dropping below its vapor saturation point, which is defined as the temperature at which the refrigerant will change from a vapor to a liquid. The heat that has been expelled changes the state of the refrigerant without changing its temperature, and this heat is known as the latent heat of condensation. Any further drop in temperature after the phase change is known as subcooling, which can be defined as the difference between the temperature of the refrigerant leaving the condenser and the saturation temperature of that refrigerant. As that liquid is pumped towards the evaporator, it passes through the metering device, where it expands rapidly, converting it into a low temperature, low pressure liquid, which then absorbs the heat from the area being cooled, giving the cooling effect that the system is designed to create. The heat absorbed from the cabinet raises the refrigerant temperature above its liquid saturation point, thereby converting the low pressure liquid to a low pressure vapor, which then enters the compressor and the cycle then repeats itself. The change of state that happens inside the evaporator also happens without a change in temperature, and the heat absorbed for the process is known as the latent heat of evaporation. Any temperature increase that occurs after the change of state is known as superheat and can be defined as the difference in temperature between the refrigerant leaving the evaporator and the saturation temperature of that refrigerant. Because the evaporator and condenser serve to move heat from one area to another, they are both commonly referred to as heat exchangers, and the rate of exchange is determined by the medium that heat is being expelled to, as well as the temperature difference between the two. The most common media used in refrigeration systems are air and water. To facilitate this heat exchange, there needs to be a significant difference in temperature between the refrigerant and the surrounding medium. And this temperature difference is controlled by manipulating the pressure in the system. The compressor raises the pressure of the refrigerant before it enters the condenser and thereby raises its temperature high enough to allow for the heat exchange necessary to change its state. The compressor therefore serves the dual purpose of raising the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant entering the condenser, as well as circulating the refrigerant through the system. For the evaporator to absorb the heat from the area being cooled, the refrigerant liquid entering it needs to be at a very low temperature for the difference to be sufficient for the heat exchange. This is done by lowering the pressure of the refrigerant entering the evaporator, thereby lowering its temperature too, and the metering device serves this purpose. The two most commonly used metering devices are the capillary tube and expansion valve. Refrigerants are chosen specifically for their saturation temperature, which is commonly referred to as their boiling point, as this is effectively the temperature at which the refrigerant boils off in the evaporator converting it to its vapor state before it re-enters the compressor. R134A, for example, has a saturation temperature of minus 26 degrees Celsius and is used for medium temperature applications such as domestic refrigerators. R410A, which is currently most used in air conditioning systems, has a saturation temperature of minus 51 degrees Celsius and R507, with its saturation temperature of minus 46 degrees Celsius, is commonly seen in low temperature applications such as freezer rooms. 
There are many options on the market for refrigerants and more are consistently being developed to meet industry demands. Governmental regulations and environmental guidelines are just some of the drivers behind innovation in the refrigerant manufacturing space. Anyway, I hope this video was useful and feel free to check out some of our other videos in the series on refrigeration basics. Until next time guys.